Hi guys, I'm Matt. And I'm Bailey and welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, we are going to be telling you guys all about our infertility journey and what that's looked like so far. We are currently outside as you can tell because we are at the beach. We took a little bit of a beach trip getaway with everything that we've got going on and my birthday was on Monday and I know we haven't posted on this channel here in a while but we kind of took a break and was trying to figure out how we we're going to go about I guess talking about this on YouTube. So if you're new here and you enjoyed today's video, make sure you get a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button down below. It means the world to us when you subscribe to our channel. And basically, we're just going to sit down and tell you guys all about our infertility journey so far today. Okay, so if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you definitely should. It's at the Bailey Williams, and because I posted a reel on there, basically sharing that Matt and I had been going through some infertility things um and that's kind of one of the main reasons we started this channel was to talk about our infertility journey to vlog it and share it with you guys we did vlog a couple clips throughout the process that i'm probably going to post after this video kind of like sharing how we found out and the raw emotions from finding out but i wanted to kind of sit down and just talk about the process and what that's looked like so far before posting that video so it made a lot of sense so i went last night when me and matt were laying in bed and I made a note of everything that's kind of been <laughs> happening or going on since starting our infertility journey, where we started, and then also where we are currently. So, do you want to say anything? <laughs> so, I'll probably take the lead on this video and kind of go through the timeline. And if Matt wants to pop in, he can. Or you can read some bullet points. So, I guess we'll start out with December 2021. So in December 2021, we had been married for a little over two years at that point, and we decided that we wanted to try to start having a family and a baby sometime within 2022, probably soon after 2022 started. So I had my yearly gyno appointment in December 2021. I had been married for two, a little over two years. We got married in 2020. Been a year and a half. Oh. <laughs> a year and a half regardless we've been married for a little bit and we decided that we wanted to get my IUD out whatever however long we've been married for and we got it out earlier than I think we wanted a kid because we thought in the back of our head like okay it might take a little bit to get pregnant so let's go ahead and get it out and see what happens so we ended up getting my IUD out well, I got my IUD out in December 2021 flash forward to December or January of 2022 that is when we decided to start <laughs> that's when we decided to start trying trying loosely for a baby so basically not preventing it so we weren't really taking any measures to prevent me getting pregnant but we also weren't like hardcore trying because we knew that it was still a little bit early and we didn't 100 percent like if we got pregnant that was great we were super excited but if not we didn't like we weren't going to be upset if it was taking a little bit because we weren't exactly 100 percent like ready like if it happened we were but if we just weren't preventing basically but not yeah. doing the other tactics in june of 2022 we decided to start trying like actually trying like going through all the steps ovulation test uh body temperature and stuff like that and that was kind of the first i guess legit step in yeah. the direction of trying um i mean she was updating me on uh like the ovulation test and like hey like leaving it on the counter for me to see it <laughs> so um, basically at that point we had been not preventing for six months and it hadn't happened and we weren't i guess surprised it hadn't happened we were like okay like maybe it's going to take a little bit more effort to get pregnant so i ordered the ovulation strips on amazon started doing that started tracking my basic basic my basal body temperature all the different things uh, because I was like okay if it's not gonna just happen easily like let's actually start trying because we would like to be pregnant the second half of 2022 so that's when we started like actually going for it and like okay we're hardcore trying now like no more just like lollygagging we knew exactly when we were supposed to be you know having sex things like that um, and throughout that time period I was having regular periods I literally ever since I got my IUD out I started my period the exact next month and I've had 100 like percent like regular periods every 27 29 days for four to five days like on the dot my periods were regular I was getting positive ovulation strips I know a lot of people like never get that positive ovulation spike but I would get that my basal body temperature was doing everything it was supposed to be doing so we were just kind of confused as like why it was taking so long and not working because my body seemingly was doing everything right and a lot of times people I feel like 
never really think it's the man right off the bat at least i always think the woman mind you during this time um trying for a baby is very stressful especially when it's something that both of you guys want and the second half of the year is really stressful for us in general because it's football season in the fall um so i think we definitely started to not drift apart but have some issues in our marriage around trying for a baby I was really like hardcore trying for it and like this this but I didn't feel like Matt was giving the effort that I wanted from him he didn't like how it all consumed me and we started to fight a lot around it um, just from lack of I guess effort from one another we just didn't neither of us felt like we were being heard I guess so it really started to put a damper on our marriage which I know trying for a baby a lot of times can for other couples and at one point I think we were both just like okay this isn't working like we're not getting along things aren't going to plan but like the one thing we're not going to do is let our marriage suffer because we're trying so hard for a baby like that's yeah. just not what we're going to do do you have anything to say about that it was definitely a interesting time um just from the whole process they're still remodeling from the big hurricane uh, that came through Myrtle Beach um, so they're still remodeling fixing up so that's what that is um, but uh, it's a uh, it's a trying and tiring process um, the whole trying uh, part of and it. it didn't help that we were in football season. It was during football season, so he was already stressed tired out. And stressed, yeah. Um, Thursday and Friday nights was was a uh, late nights for me, so um, definitely took a toll on that. Uh, so we did. We kind of had a little bit of a not a heart to heart. But At one point, we had a very deep conversation, like an argument that turned into a deep conversation. Yeah, and it led to let's just relax the last yeah. couple of months. Let's just kind of let it take its course. If it works, awesome. We'll kind of regroup. Um, I think at that point, did, too. I think at that point, you already had you had your appointment. Um, I know I'm skipping a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're ahead. skipping. I know Pulse. you had an appointment coming up, so we were kind of like, let's just yeah. kind of take our time and get to that appointment and then go from there. Yeah. This was around when we started really like getting agitated with one another and just having a lot of stress around it. It was like late October, early November because once again, middle of football season, things still weren't working and we, I felt like we were doing everything right and I was really confused as to why things weren't progressing how I wanted. Um, and I feel like for me at least, I always had a very deep feeling that it would be hard for me to conceive. I've had that feeling since I was in high school and before I even met Matt and got married, um, not like just a casual, like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get pregnant, ha, ha, ha. Like a genuinely like deep feeling of discernment from the Lord that I was going to struggle to conceive. Like I've always felt it in my bones. I've always knew that. So when this was happening, to me, it was God's plan for my life, like panning out. And I had already like knew this was going to happen. Like I was not, I was frustrated and I was upset, but deep down I knew that this was what was like it made sense to me um i always thought it would be me that maybe prevented us from conceiving but i don't know i don't know how to even explain it but truly like a deep discernment from the lord that trying to get pregnant would be difficult for me i don't know if that was just god putting that in my heart so this process would be a little easier to understand but truly i knew that i was not surprised that this was happening i knew that this was god's plan for me um but still, you know, through social media, I had been following a bunch of different people who were trying to conceive. And I'd seen one couple who was diagnosed with azoospermia and then another couple who had low sperm count. And they had taken an at-home sperm fertility check, like, test. Basically, like, a pregnancy test or ovulation test, but for sperm. So, around November, me and Matt did that. And it came back negative. And at that point, we were like, okay, like, what what's going on? Like, did we do it wrong? Um, is it just like messed yeah, up? Yeah, I was in denial, denial. With it a little yeah. bit because I was like, there's just no way yeah. like that that's even possible. Like, we didn't either put enough in it or in a little sample or... So he's living in denial. Yeah, so I was just kind of like, there's no way. Like, this is not happening. And meanwhile, I'm like, 
this is exact this is happening like this is exactly what happened like like i said i had that discernment from the lord about um having a hard time con- to conceive i've had numerous times like things been put in front of my face like like i said through social media a couple with azospermia and like i truly felt like this was god putting the little easter eggs in front of my mind to prepare me for this and every single time things like this happened like i was not surprised because i swear the lord was already putting all this in front of me for a purpose and a reason so when that happened obviously we were a little upset but i had my appointment in december for my yearly and i was like let's just chill out we're not gonna try anymore and we're just gonna like if it happens it happens but we're not gonna do the ovulation test we're just gonna chill out and come december at my appointment in 2022 we'll start to figure things out um so i go to that appointment it's just my yearly with my OBGYN. had a pap regular thing talked about everything that was going on expressed our my concerns because of the at-home sperm fertility check with matt and my doctor went ahead and scheduled us for a semen analysis because he was like yeah your body seems to be doing what it's doing um that at home sp- uh, sperm check might not be accurate but it is a little bit of a red flag so let's go ahead and order that and if that's not the, the issue we will have you come back in and we'll start doing some tests on your body so we went ahead and performed that semen analysis at a local hospital so my OBGYN ordered it and it was at our local hospital so we went in did that and then a couple days later they called me and let me know that Matt had zero sperm that they found zero sperm on that result um i was devastated i cried i was brokenhearted like mainly like i said i wasn't surprised but i think it was just the reality like holy crap this is happening like we're dealing with infertility and this is real this isn't just like something in my mind anymore and it really hit me hard and then having to tell your spouse your husband that hey like your body isn't doing what it's supposed to do I didn't want him to feel guilty. I didn't want him to feel like he had let me down. Any of that? How did you feel when that when that all happened? Guys, men, whoever is watching this, here comes across this, you will feel that way. Um, I know I did. I, there for a while I was like, I, this is me. Like, it's on me. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, it, it, it was tough uh, and I'm not one to express my feelings no <laughs> um, that conversation when she did tell me um, my first word was okay that sucks well what's our next step um, step so um, <clears throat> she got a little upset just because the emotions wasn't fully what she was thinking well he um, didn't seem upset at all <laughs> but I also the same thing with the first time we did it I was thinking okay let's just one time let's what else can we do can we take another one um did we wait too long between doing it and taking it to the hospital like what's the like there's a lot of things that could have happened um would you say you were still in denial at that point not as much it was more so just like okay what's our next step like what can we do next like i'm okay this is it there's several different roads that we can go down let's see what this road leads us and let's go with it so I was definitely not as I guess torn down maybe yeah um, not as devastated as I was I guess at the moment because I in that moment felt like it was a dead end like it was a never like a, like a complete no we're never going to have biological children like I am I hate to say I'm a pessimist I like to call it more so a realist versus a pessimist but I just automatically went to the worst and like trying to solve it in different ways but basically once we got those results our OBGYN or my OBGYN referred us to a urologist locally to us he wasn't a fertility specialist or anything but just a regular old urologist so we went to that appointment and he ordered another semen analysis and also ran blood work on Matt at that appointment I feel like he basically, you know, he diagnosed us with azoospermia, but he also kind of gave us some hope. He was like, all chances are it's obstructive and like, we're going to be able to fix it. You're going to have plenty of sperm inside of you, like blah, blah, blah. And we left that appointment relatively hopeful. Like, okay, this is going to be hard. We're going to have to do IVF, but it'll be okay. So Matt repeated the sperm analysis. We waited on the blood results to come back and then we had a follow-up appointment a few weeks later. Meanwhile, all this is happening like right before Christmas. So a very stressful time in general. And we went back in for that second appointment 
and he let us know that the results for the sperm analysis came back the same, zero sperm found, and that Matt's blood work came back with um, elevated FSH and LH hormones, meaning that it was non-obstructive azoospermia. Um, and basically didn't really leave us with much hope at that point. Um, I think we left that appointment very, very defeated, very hopeless. Um, he didn't really know much to tell us because, like I said, he wasn't a fertility specialist. So he went ahead and was like, I'm going to refer you all to a specialist urologist who can figure things out a little bit more for you guys. Um, you know, not all hope is lost, but he definitely, it definitely didn't give us much hope. Um, no, knowing definitely. that it was not obstructive and so it was genetic basically um it wasn't something that they could give him hormones for or could go in surgically and fix it was just basically how matt was born and at that point i felt like it was game over definitely three days before christmas my you it definitely uh definitely was tough it definitely she said kind of hopeless like, what can we do? Is there anything we can do? Um, but at that point, we started really leaning on God and, mm -hmm. and uh, family that knew about it. <clears throat> um, well, you might have, but I didn't. I feel like I started to resent God a little bit during you that did. time. You did. I did not. I kind of went towards... Um, I was very angry at the world for a while. You were. So, I mean, I just felt like everything I ever wanted had been ripped away from me. I just kept asking God, why me? Why do I deserve this? Why does my family deserve this? Like, I've done everything in my power. Like, I'm not perfect by any means, but I feel like I've been a decent steward of God and tried to live my life for Him. You know, I could definitely be better in areas, of course, but... I was just like, there's so many people out here that have kids and don't want them or get abortions. And, you know, it's just why, why us? Why cannot, can we not have a child together when we love each other so much? I think that was the hardest thing for me is, you know, you marry someone with the idea of conceiving a child and having a child that's half them and half you. And, of course, there's other avenues and options. And in the end, if we still can't make this work we will pursue those and we want to be parents regardless but having to give up the idea of that child being you know 50 me 50 Matt felt very unfair to me and didn't feel like I don't know I just didn't feel like I deserved it that kinda, we deserved it I had the mindset of why not us like this is our path like this is going to be us this is going to be who we are um so it was a tough it was a tough uh, path to navigate there for a, there for a while, um, there for a couple. What we say, a couple of days. I'd say a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because um, we had a long period in between that appointment and the next appointment. Yeah. Um, we had Christmas. Yeah. Um, so it was. It was difficult. Um, it was. Slowly but surely, I feel like I started to come around, and I was having a conversation with my mom one day when I was having a really hard day, and. She told me this story of this person. She had went to like some convention thing and she told me this story of this. It was like a real estate convention and there was a man speaking and he was talking about how his daughter had cancer and how she never asked or like said like, why me? Like, God, why me? Anything. And he was like, asked her one day something like, are you mad at God? Like, and she was like, why would I be mad at God? Like, why not me? Like, I'm no less deserving of cancer than anyone else. Like, I'm human and that's just it like why not me like why someone else and not me because I'm not better than anybody else I'm not better than God like I deserve like not that I necessarily deserve this but why not God choosing me for this so why not God choosing us for infertility why not me not being able to conceive in the perfect fairy tale way that I thought like God doesn't owe me anything so why not me and I think from there in that conversation with my mom really started to shift my mindset um, obviously still have hard days here and there, but at that point we went into, and when I finally snapped out of that, I think we all went into, which everyone else already was, but in a very much so prayer mode, um, praying to God for results, for answers, for hope, um, 
for a chance. Yeah, for a chance at, at anything. And at that point, too, the appointment that the doctors have gotten us in Hickory were um, for the 27th of February, which hasn't even happened yet. And I just was not satisfied with having to wait that long. So I went ahead and scheduled myself an appointment at the beginning of February for a fertility clinic. I was like, we're going to have to go through a fertility clinic to get pregnant regardless of what we do. So I want to go ahead and start looking into them, getting established at one, looking into my body and seeing if there's anything wrong with my body because we hadn't even started looking into my body at that point. Um, so I went ahead and scheduled an appointment with the fertility clinic. Um, he did an ultrasound on me, said everything for the most part looked pretty good. And I told him about our situation. Matt wasn't able to go. He was actually at a football clinic. But my mom went with me and he was like, well, we do have a urologist on staff who specializes in infertility and, you know, maybe I can get you guys an appointment with him sooner than your other doctor. And I was like, well, that would be great because at that point I was just wanting answers. I wanted to get with a different doctor, you know, figure things out. So he was able to get us an appointment in a week or a week later with their urologist on staff. This is Carolina's Fertility Institute, which if you're in North Carolina dealing with infertility, I highly recommend them. Um, so that's kind of where we were at. So we went to that appointment on a, the week, a week after that on a Friday, and basically we discussed everything with him, Matt's hormone levels. Um, at that point they did genetic testing, um, which we're still waiting on the results for, but they draw, drew blood, I then guess. they also did another sample. Yep. Um, semen sample. You want to tell them? Okay. You can. Um, <laughs> so, took, did the sample, obviously. Um, went back in the room, kind of did some more talking, and then um, at that point, we did the blood work. Um, and while we were sitting there, uh, she walked in, or she was sitting out front of... Um, an office waiting to go in there and stuff and um all of a sudden the doctor that we've been talking to comes running around the corner and uh i'm sitting here taking blood and all of a sudden he goes we found one um he said uh he said it's moving right? no he said it's not moving that's right he said he said we found one but it's not moving so he told matt because matt was sitting in an office getting his blood taken and then he came around and he told me he's like we found one it's not moving but there's one there um and at that point like i could have started crying in the middle of the office i'm surprised i didn't because previous you know that week leading up to that appointment we had been praying and praying and praying we went to prayer service and covered matt in prayer i mean we had just been praying just give us any sort of sign of hope god like just give us something to cling to i was praying at least for me specifically like take me out of this dark spot lord and give me show me your grace show me your goodness um because i had been struggling so hard mentally and just felt so rock bottom and I was like I just need some sense of hope that you are still in control and that you're still good and faithful and I need something like I'm weak I'm human and I cannot do this on my own please send something for me and in that moment that felt like God just wrapping his arms around me and telling me child I've got you you're not alone in this you know my plan for your life is way better than your own and it was just like I could finally breathe again. Like, it felt like the weight of the world was finally lifted off my shoulders in that moment. So, we were thrilled. Yeah, it was. <laughs> obviously. Obviously, it was great news, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it was a blessing. Such um, a blessing. That's and, all we wanted, was just one single little glimpse of hope, and that's what that little sperm did for us. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had two no's, and then... Um, kind of at that point we were thinking surgery um and then we we're like hey let's the doctor was very um adamant on doing one at his place um yep. so we did one there and and uh found one and um that was what two weeks ago yeah two weeks ago so basically after that, we went and sat down with like a financial consultant and they talked about how much everything was going to cost and we left feeling super duper hopeful and excited as you can imagine and then we went to Chili's for lunch and we were sitting in Chili's waiting on the semen analysis results and Dr. Sodry ended up testing us the results and they ended up finding even more than one. They found 12 modal sperm, which are sperm that were basically healthy and moving in the right direction. They found a few um, that were like mobile but like and alive but like swimming in circles so like that were not good quality 
And then they found a few dead ones. So he was like, this is great news. We found more. And at that point, we were like so happy because the past two places basically told us no. But he was kind of explaining it to us like those places don't really take the time and the care to really search the semen fully and spin it down. And like he explained it to me is like they are looking through a, a gold mine for gold. And they spend time searching that semen to find just one sperm. So being able to have found more sperm was blessing i mean we were not even expecting one like i had literally lost basically all hope so the fact that they found it was amazing at that point we had already scheduled a micro test see for may 31st i believe yeah. or 30th and that's kind of where we are right now so that micro test see is still scheduled um but when we got that information that they had found more sperm the doctor basically told us um you know come in for another sample we'll see what we get because at that point the sample Matt had given was only like two days worth of abstinence um so he was like come back in so Monday Matt goes back in for another semen analysis so prayers for good results we'll see what that shows and then I think once we figure out what that semen analysis shows we'll kind of get more of a game plan as far as what we're going to do um if he continues to give good samples with good sperm they're going to freeze it and Hopefully, we could bank up enough sperm to go through a cycle of IVF without having to undergo the microtessy surgery. But if not, we do still have that scheduled just in case we do need that surgery. So, I think overall, that's where we are now. Um, that's real time. We're very hopeful and excited that, you know, things will continue to trend in a positive way and be successful. Um, you know, we're still babies to this IVF thing, to the infertility world, and we know that there's still so many hoops to jump through. I mean, we'll have an egg retrieval, then they have to fertilize them, then they have to go to blast, and you have to do a transfer and even hope that the trans, like the embryo sticks. So there's still a ton of hoops and loops and hills and everything to navigate, but God has not filled us yet or let us down yet, and he is good, and we serve a good, good father, and we know he's not done with our story yet, and it's just the beginning. So we just wanted to share that all with you guys, kind of tell you where we are in our journey right now. Um, to encourage any of you if you're dealing with infertility and to remind you that God is still good even in the darkest of valleys and the hardest of trials um, and to never turn your back from him or stray from him because he always provides and we're excited to take you guys along with us as we navigate this journey we're going to try to be vlogging in real time and updating you guys on you know everything that's going on and take you guys along for the egg retrieval and all that fun fun stuff but yeah I think we're really at a place now where at least I am where I can finally breathe and be happy again and enjoy life again and not be so in a dark spot because for a little bit I really found myself at rock bottom and I feel like life's life's good again it's gonna be a it's gonna be a road um it's gonna be some bumps and it's gonna be some, some smooth times um I think right now isn't that smooth. Um, kind of an area where we got good news and we're waiting on more. Um, like she said, we have a point Monday the 27th. Um, so at that point, we should be able to find out more information and then um, we'll be able to share it. And the reason that we are sharing this process, and it's just, I guess, from my standpoint, maybe from hers too, but we found um, other. Um, people that have shared their story and um, kind of it's kind of helped us um, kind of understand but then also with our feelings as well um, so I definitely uh, with those people being able to reach us I want to be able to reach other people as well and being able to share this journey with other people is what we is what I at least want to do because people have helped us um, get through this process and and um, kind of see where this goes and um, I know we've got pretty a pretty good amount of friends and family out there that definitely watch this and and um, if this is where they get their updates from or uh, being able just to see raw emotion because you'll be some because there'll be some clips that'll be some raw emotion um, so being able to see that and be a part of this journey I feel like it's going to be the um the most fun mm -hmm. and definitely you know taking our journey and sharing it with people 
to, you know, make them feel less alone. I feel like that's one of the main reasons that other people's journeys have done for me is made me feel like we're less alone, give me some sort of hope that things can still happen. Um, and then also, you know, just share how God has, you know, kept us sane during this and also delivered us during this time and to share that he is still good even when things aren't going your way. Um, you know, it's easy to be a Christian and to trust in God and believe in God when things are going your way. Um, but I think it's what you do with your faith and how you trust in God at your weakest that really shows um, the faith or the strength in your faith. And I know mine has been tested. Um, I don't know about Matt, but my faith has definitely been tested through this. And there's definitely been times where I have wanted to scream and shout and question God. Um, but if anything, this has made my walk and my journey and my faith with God stronger and been able to put literally everything in his hands and I definitely want to share and glorify how he continues to deliver us out of this season of life and how good he is just be able to share our story with everyone and take you guys with us the good the bad the up the downs um, because there's going to be tons of different emotions tons of highs tons of lows and also for people who have never been through IVF and maybe are going through IVF, they can kind of see what this process looks like because I know that I've never been through this and I'm kind of scared and confused as what it looks like. So if we can document it and share with someone else and make them feel a little bit more comfortable or give a little bit more hope in their journey, that will be worth it. So we love you guys. Thank you for sticking around. Please continue to pray for us. If you do believe in prayer, we will really appreciate all the prayers and all the good faith and all the good love and support that we could get right now. Um, during this journey, but we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in our next one. Bye